In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So today we're going to uh, listen to two talk. It's two um, uh, uh, documents on Our Lady uh, and Our Lord speaking about Christmas. Uh, the first one is volume 8, December 25th, 1908. How to make Jesus be born and grow in your heart. So the whole reason for the birth of Jesus is that he becomes alive in us. He wants us to be to be one with him. So Louisa starts by saying, uh, finding myself in my usual state. Now, Louisa's usual state was suffering and heaven. Uh, she could go to heaven throughout her life. You know, Jesus would take her to paradise. He'd take her to the to the Garden of Eden. He'd take us here. He'd take her take her to uh, back to Bethlehem where she could witness the birth of Jesus. See, there's no time or space in the divine will. And what, what's so beautiful about this way to pray is Jesus says, I give the gift of bilocation to my children in the divine will. It's not the bilocation of the saints. Jesus takes us where he wants to take us. Like he would take Louisa every night and tour the universe with Louisa. And when you get to Corrado, you'll, you'll notice that her socks are stained, they're dirty, and they're ripped. They got holes in them. And I remember the first time I looked at Luisa's socks that were there in, in Corrado, and I said, they didn't even give her, you know, they gave her used socks. And when, when you begin to understand that she had brand new socks, but it's just to prove that Jesus took her throughout the universe to show her the, 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 this creation that God has given to humanity. So she finds herself in her usual state and she says, I was longing for the baby Jesus. Now, this is December 25th for her. Uh, she's longing for Jesus. And that's the desire of the children of the divine will. The children of the divine will are longing for the return of Jesus, longing for the kingdom to be established on earth as it is in heaven. You know, as, as the Essenes were longing for the Messiah before Jesus was born. We are longing for the kingdom because it's here now. It's it's coming. It's and we got to get ready. So she says she was longing for the baby Jesus. As after many hardships, Jesus made himself seen in my interior as a little baby. And Jesus told me, my daughter, the best way to make me be born in one's heart. So here is what God wants for us. It's Christmas. He wants to be born in our hearts. The best way to make me Jesus be born in your heart. He says, first, you should empty yourself of everything. Okay, everything that is of earth. You, you, we, we when you read the, the, during Advent, the, the, the prayers at, at Holy Mass, they say, let us learn how to embrace the things of heaven and no longer embrace the things of earth. This is what Jesus is saying to us too. The first way, the first thing is to empty yourself of all, of everything. Because finding the empty space, now here's Jesus says, then I can place all my goods in it. So what's this empty place? It's, you know, we fill it with things of earth, you know, with hobbies, with, with even addictions. And Jesus says, I want this empty so I can be there. So I can lead you, I could guide you, I could direct you, Jesus says. So he says, so finding the empty space in the in your heart, he says, I can give you and I could put all my goods in your heart as I as I did with Adam in the beginning. Only then can I remain in it forever. If there is room to be able to carry all that belongs to me. And, and this is all the divine qualities of God. He we, he wants to share in his divinity. That our life in the divine will is, is said very clearly at Holy Mass. When the priest puts the drop of water into the chalice, may we share in the divinity of Christ as Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity. He says, I want to remain forever in your heart. 
if there's room to carry all that belongs to me and all that is my own. He says, listen, Jen, Jesus says, if a person who went to live in a house of someone else uh, would be, he could call it, he could call himself to be happy only when he found some empty space in which to be able to put all of his belongings in. Otherwise, he would be unhappy. And then Jesus says, and so am I. If you, if it's cluttered with the things of the world, the flesh and the devil, if it's there, he says, I can't be there. But when it's empty, when there's an emptiness, a longing for God, a desire for God, he says, I can fill it with my divine qualities as much as a human wants. And that, that's what you see when you read the Virgin Mary in the kingdom. Our Lady says that to uh, Louisa. Uh, the, he, she says, get ready to receive as much as, as you want of these divine qualities, as much as you can contain, as a human could possibly could contain. So the second thing, in order to make me be born and to increase my divine happiness, Jesus says, is that everything that the soul contains, both internal and ex external, everything, this is the second part, must be done for Jesus. We want to do everything for the love of God. So when you're washing the dishes, I'm going to wash the dishes for the glory of God. When you're um, driving a car, I'm going to drive the car to please God. I want to do everything for Jesus. Uh, if you're mowing the lawn, I want to mow the lawn for the glory of God. So what you're doing is you're putting the best in what you're doing. It's not just haphazard. You're doing this for the love of Jesus. So what with this, everything must be done for me, Jesus says. This is the second thing to make me be born, to increase my divine happiness within you. Everything that the soul contains, both internal and external, everything must be done for the love of me, Jesus says. Everything must serve to honor me. Everything should be praising God and loving God and glorifying God. That's heaven. And that's what you learn when you start praying the rounds. You start praying the rounds with peace, joy, and happiness. He says, uh, that you, everything must be done for me. Everything be done, must be done to serve, to honor me. Everything is to execute my orders. What are Jesus' orders? Love me with your whole mind, your whole heart, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. If only one thing, one thought, one word is not for me, Jesus says, I, God, feel unhappy. And while I should be the master, humans make me the slave. And he says, can I tolerate this? Can I tolerate all that's happening? See, the kingdom is coming. And so we have to put Jesus in, our, in the proper place in our hearts. So the first thing we do in the divine will is we say, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord of my heart. I want you to be the king of my heart. I want, I want to serve you. I want you to be my master. I want you to be my, my king, my all. And, and Jesus says, good. This is why I created you, so that you could share in my divinity. The third thing Jesus says is heroic love, magnified love, love of sacrifice. So when Our Lady says, my soul magnifies the Lord, it's all based on love. Heroic love, loving God with your whole heart, mind, and strength. Magnifying love, like love like Our Lady, love of sacrifice. What's the love of sacrifice? You're sacrificing your human will. What's your human will? It's what we do when we go to confession. We say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This is what I thought, what I said, what I did, what I failed to do, and I don't want to live like this. I'm going to, I'm going, I'm going to die to this. Never give it life anymore. So we stop feeding the demon of worry, fear, anxiety. We stop feeding those guys. We starve them. So this love of sacrifice, I am sacrificing the misery of the human will. Why? To live in God's holy divine will, which is peace, joy, and happiness. So Jesus says these three loves, heroic love, magnified love, and sacrificial love, make my happiness, Jesus says, grow in a marvelous way in your soul. Because these loves render the soul capable of divine works, which are superior to the human strength. And when she does these divine works with my strength alone, it, it everything everything falls into place. So what, what Jesus is showing us is, how can you do a divine act? Jesus, breathe in my breathing. It's Jesus doing that. 
That's a divine act. It's Jesus in you. The, we Humans don't do divine acts, but when we have Jesus do it, when we get out of the way, this is the sacrifice. I don't want to breathe anymore. Jesus, you breathe in my breathing. I don't want my heart beating anymore. I want you, Jesus, beating in my heart beating. These three loves, Jesus says, makes my happiness grow in a marvelous way. And they render the soul capable of God's works, the divine, the divine life reigning in us, which are so greater than the human strengths. And when she does this, when she learns how to say, Jesus, walk in my walking, Jesus, breathe in my breathing, Jesus, dance in my dancing, Jesus, sing in my singing. He says that it's divine strength. It's Jesus's divine strength that reigns in us. And they will expand the soul by making not only her, but other souls love me. So in your home, when you're, when, if you are saying to Jesus, gaze in my gazing, listen in my listening, speak in my speaking, you be here, Jesus. I don't want to be here. I want you to be here. I want your love to be shining in my family. Others begin to fall in love with Jesus. Why? There's peace. There's order. There's joy in your house. And, and that's what God is asking. And the soul will reach the point of enduring anything, even death, in order to triumph in everything. And to be able to say to me, Jesus, I have nothing else. Jesus, Everything is only love for you. This, this dying to self, dying to ego and will is, is how we're supposed to be living in the divine will. Our focus has to be on God and God alone. This is what God is waiting for. It's a new and divine way of holiness that John Paul II prophesied at, about at the canonization of St. Honorable de Francia. In this way, Jesus says, the soul will not only make me be born, but the soul will let me grow. The soul, the soul will form for me a beautiful paradise, a beautiful heaven in her heart for me to reign there. And as he was saying this, Jesus, Louisa says, I looked at Jesus and from little, in one instant, he became big in such a way that I, Louisa, remained completely filled with Jesus. We're getting a glimpse of, of what's going to happen with us when we receive Holy Communion. Jesus says, wait to see the, the power and, and the, the, the miracles that are gonna happen when the souls begin to live in the divine will. He says, I want to fill the soul completely with, with, with me, Jesus says. I want your skin to be my, uh, like a veil Oh, I want your skin to be like a veil over my body. I want to gaze in your gaze and listen in your listening, speak in your speaking. Because he says in volume 36, I created the senses for humanity for God. God wants to gaze in your gazing. God wants to speak in your speaking. God wants to listen in your listening. And when we begin to learn this, our families become joyful, happy, peaceful. Why? Jesus is there. Now, now we're going to hear from Our Lady. Now, Our Lady is going to talk about what happened when Jesus was born. The Queen of Heaven and the Kingdom of the Divine Will. This amazing book that, uh, read it during uh, May and, and, and October. Those are two of Our Lady's months. You can read it all, all year long, but especially during those two months, those 30 days, those 31 days, learn to, to be taught by the Blessed Mother how to live in the divine will. That's how they, that's how Our Lady taught Louisa. The little, Jesus, the little King Jesus is born. The angels point to him and the angels call the shepherds to adore Jesus. The heaven and the earth rejoice. The sun and the eternal word flowing, following its course dispels the night of sin and gives start to the full day of grace, this new and divine way of holiness is coming. And then she talks about the home of Bethlehem. So she, when she's talking to Louisa, she's always talking to us. What, what Louisa did was put this down on paper for us. So the first thing Our Lady says to us is, my dearest child, oh, how I long for you to come into my arms, to have you, to, to have the great commitment of being, being able to say to our little baby King Jesus, don't cry, my pretty one. See, here with us is, is my child. Our lady saying this about Louisa. 
but my little child, Louisa, and now us with Louisa, who want to recognize you, Jesus, as their king, to give you, Jesus, dominion within their soul, to let you, Jesus, lay her in her the kingdom of the most holy divine will. This is what God is doing. It's, it's, he's waited. See, this is the time this is happening. People say, why, why, why did Our Lady appear to Bruno in 1947 and tell Bruno, time has now come to an end? It's not the end of the world. It's the end of the era of the evil one. For 6,000 years, we've been under the thumb of the evil one. When Adam listened to the devil, he had to leave paradise. And Jesus said, I saw Lucifer fall like lightning to the earth. This is where we've been for 6,000 years. 2,000 years ago, Jesus redeemed us. Our Lady was with him on Calvary. This, this new and divine way of holiness, of sanctification, Jesus says now after 2,000 years of redemption, he says begins now. And, and little by little, it's we're getting ready for this great event that God's got planned for humanity. So it seems like everything's falling apart, but in reality, God is winning. God is winning. The kingdom is coming. The kingdom is going to be on earth as it is in heaven. And when the kingdom of God comes on earth as it is in heaven, the fulfillment of the Our Father, the devil who's been banished from heaven will be banished from earth. What does that mean? Scripture says no more tears, no more sorrow, no more sadness, no more sin, no more death. This is what we're waiting for. This is what we're getting ready for for 2,000 years. And Jesus says, now what I've given to Louisa, I'm going to give to the world. So listen to what she says. Don't cry, my pretty one. Here we're talking to the baby Jesus. See here with us is the little child, Louisa, and, and us who want to recognize you, Lord, as king, to give you, Lord Jesus, dominion within their souls, to let you, Lord Jesus, lay in us the kingdom of your most holy divine will. God is going to do this. Now, child of my heart, this is what the lady, Louis, our lady saying this to us. Now, my child of my heart, while you, you are all attentive and longing for the little baby Jesus, pay attention to me, Our Lady says, and listen. You must know that it was midnight when the little newborn king came out from my maternal womb, and the night turned into day, and the one who was the Lord of light, of life, of love, put to flight the night of the human will the night of sin, put it away, the night of all evils. And as a sign of what he was doing in, in the order of souls with his usual omnipotent fiat, the midnight, listen to this, turned to the most refulgent daylight. When Jesus was born, it was daylight. Remember in Calvary, when he died, it turned dark. With, with Jesus, it's light, it's life, it's love. And he comes to us as a little baby because he says to Louisa, I don't want to make you afraid. I want you to realize that you, you are mine and I am yours. So he says all things, all created things ran to praise their creator in that little holy humanity of Jesus. The sun in the sky ran to give its first kisses of light to the little baby Jesus and warm him with its heat. The ruling wind of purified air of the stables, uh, its waves with its sweet moaning said to Jesus, I love you. The heavens were shaken from their very foundations. That's in the book of Revelation as well. When the earth shakes, and we're, we're going to witness this, it's going to shake for two reasons. One reason is going to be people jumping up and down in ecstasy. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I glorify you, Jesus. And the others are going to be wailing and grinding their teeth, pounding their feet on the earth, knowing this is how they're going to live for eternity. The earth is shake, well, was shaking when the moment when Jesus was born. And at the end, the same thing's going to happen. But for us, hopefully for us, we will be in ecstasy loving God and praising God and thanking God, what we learn how to do here is how we're going to live eternally. The earth exalted and, they, and trembled down into the abyss. The sea roared with its gigantic waves and some all created things recognized 
that their creator was in their midst. And they all competed in praising Jesus and loving Jesus and glorifying Jesus. The very angels forming light in the air with the melodious voices, which all could hear said, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to men of goodwill. The celestial baby is born in the grotto of Bethlehem, wrapped in a poor little swaddling clothes. Peace on earth to men of God's will. It's not peace on earth, goodwill toward men. It's peace on earth to those of God's will. That's why we're going to see many people in heaven that we never would have expected from other denominations, other religions, because they are people of goodwill. God is expecting that of us. And that's why he's given us the divine will. He wants to see in us this good will that, that the angels were rejoicing over when, when Jesus was born. And, and, the, and the angels, this, it was so much so that the shepherds who were in vigil listened to those angelic voices and ran to visit the little divine king. Now, our lady's explaining this to us. She saw what was happening. She participated in this glorious event being the mother of God, Theotokos, the mother of God. My dear child, continue to listen to me. And, and this is what you're going to see every day when you read the Virgin Mary in the kingdom. And if you want to know more about the Blessed Mother, read the Prodigies of the Blessed Lady, the Prodigies of the Blessed Mother. Because Jesus says, what the saints have told you about my mother is nothing compared to what I'm going to tell you about my mother. So here, the prodigies of the Blessed Mother is what uh, Jesus gave to Louisa, basically telling her of how magnificent his mother is, how beautiful she is, how holy she is, how much he loves her, and how he has given to us his own mother. So she says, listen to me. As I received Jesus into my arms, I gave Jesus my first kiss. I felt the need to, to love, uh, the need of love to give something of my own to my little son and offering him my breast. I gave him abundant milk, milk formed in my person by the divine fiat itself. Listen to this. In order to nourish the little king, but who can tell you what I, Mary, felt in doing this? I felt seas of graces these oceans of graces, these oceans of love, these oceans of sanctity that my son Jesus gave to me in return. And it's the same thing for us. When we're in front of the Blessed Sacrament, falling in love with Jesus, looking at Jesus and the monstrance, falling in love with him, God does the same thing for us. He, he overflows us with graces of uh, oceans of, of love, of, of grace, of sanctity in, in his return for us being there. You're going to find you, you want to be with our Eucharistic Lord. You never want to leave him alone. You're going to learn this when you're in the divine will. He says, then I wrapped Jesus in, in poor but clean little clothes and I placed Jesus in the manger. This was Jesus's will. And I could do nothing without executing it. So here, she wanted to hold on to Jesus. She loves him so much. But she says, it was the will of God that I place him in the manger. Manger, manja. I mean, it's so clear where he was born. You know, the bread of life, the bread of the bread of uh, to, uh, of heaven, if you want to say. In the, in, in the manger, in the manja. This was his will. And I could do nothing without executing that. And But before doing this, I shared the baby Jesus with Saint, dear St. Saint Joseph, placing Jesus into St. Joseph's arms. And how St. Joseph rejoiced. He squeezed him to his heart. And the sweet little baby poured torrents of grace into St. Joseph's soul. It's the same thing that's happening to us. When we begin to fall in love with Jesus, there's nothing that can compare to this. Nothing. Oh, how he rejoiced. And Joseph squeezed Jesus to his heart 
And the little sweet baby Jesus poured torrents of grace into his soul. And then together with St. Joseph, we fixed the little hay in the manger and detaching him from my maternal arms, I laid Jesus in the manger. Your mother enraptured by the beauty of the divine fiat remained kneeling before Jesus most of the time. I put all of the oceans, these seas of love into motion, which the divine will had formed in me to love him, to adore him, to thank him. See, we're going to learn from our lady how to fall in love with our Eucharistic Lord. She's going to form in us her love to love him, to adore him, to thank him, to praise him, to glorify him, to worship him. See, we're in front of the Blessed Sacrament not to read a book. We're in front of the Blessed Sacrament to love God, to fall in love with God. And your hour there is very short. It's a, Jesus teaches us uh, like Acts, A-C-T-S, for 15 minutes, adore him. For the next 15 minutes, thank him. For the next 15 minutes, no, A-C, yeah, have be contrite. For the next 15 minutes, be contrite. Then the next 15 minutes to thank him. And then finally, the last 15 minutes to supplicate him, to give your petitions. But we, we have to learn to adore him and to be contrite and to thank him. And then to ask for prayer, ask for uh, help. It, usually what happens is we're, 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 we're snapping our fingers at the Lord. I need this. You got to do that. We've got to fall in love with our Lord. And, and he's looking at you in the monstrance with his love. You're going to hear about this little in a little bit. This love that God has for us. He is in love with us. He needs us to cooperate so that this love that he's pouring upon us will be given to all the world through us. And what did the little baby do in the manger? It was a continuous act of the will of our celestial father, which was also Jesus's will. So his moaning and his silence, his sighing, his wailing and his crying was calling everyone, saying in his loving wailing, come all of you, my children. You're my children, you're children of mine. For the love of you, I am born to suffering and to tears. You have to understand right from the beginning, he came to redeem us. He came to take our place, our punishment. Come all of you to know the excess of my love. Now, if you haven't read the nine excesses of love, go to luisapicaretta.me and read read the nine excesses of love. Saint Honorable de Francia, Luisa's spiritual director, said, uh, "This is so good for the soul to understand how much our God loves us, how much our God desires us, how much our God has got plans for us." So he says, children of mine, I've called you through my wailing. I've called you through my sighing. I've called you through my moaning. I've called you through my crying. I've called everyone. Come all of you, children of mine. For love of you, I am born to suffering and to tears. Come all of you. I want you to know the excess of my love. So read the nine excesses. This, it's just, it's just astonishing. You're going to learn so much that the Blessed Mother is going to teach us and our Lord himself about this birth of Jesus. Give me shelter in your hearts. And there were shepherds coming and going to visit Jesus. And to all, Jesus gave his sweet gaze and his loving smile, even within his tears. That's what, that's what you're going to experience in front of the Blessed Sacrament. The sweet gaze of Jesus, his loving smile, and his tears. He knows humanity. He knows many are on the edge of the abyss. And he's asking us to repair that for them. He's asking us what he asked Louisa. 
He said to Louisa, would you stand in the breach as Moses stood in the breach for the Israelites, not just for the Israelites, but for all my children. All those with strong human wills who are on the edge of the abyss, who are ready to fall into hell. And again, there's no time or space. You could touch somebody a thousand years ago and a thousand years from now in the divine will. Help them choose God. Repair their life. Well, how do you repair the life of, of souls? First of all, you look at your own life and you're sorry for what you thought, what you said, what you did, what you failed to do. And I'm sorry for what all my brothers and sisters have gone through, which was has, has offended you, God. Sinned against you, Lord. And Lord, have mercy on us all. Have mercy on us all. It, to understand the illumination of conscience, Jesus tells Louisa, basically, learn, learn the, 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 the book of heaven. Learn this diary of Louisa. It's going to help you get through what's coming. And it's going to be tough. It's going to be very tough, but it's nothing to be afraid of. We were born for this time. We are not afraid. God is with us. Those are the words of St. Saint, Saint Joan of Arc, a 16-year-old girl who led an army into battle and defeated another army. The battle we're in is between principalities and powers. And God is asking us to fight with the angels. And how do we fight? It's fighting with love. And who do we love? We love who God loves. And he loves all the children of God. And he wants everyone to be saved. So he's asking us to pray so that we can repair and redo. And that's the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful Catholics and kindle us the fire of your love, which is the divine will. Send forth your spirit and we will be recreated. And then you Holy Spirit will renew the face of the earth through us. We're gonna repair and redo in the name of everyone and everything past, present and future. So Jesus, when we're in front of the Blessed Sacrament, he knows what he's asked of us and he wants us to begin to hear. So he will give us his sweet gaze. He will give us his loving smiles, even within his tears, sharing with us the, the, the sorrow that's going on in the world right now. So then Jesus says, now my child, uh, this is our lady. Now my child, a little word to you, you must know this. And if you haven't read the, the book, you must know, go to luisapicaretta.me and start reading, you must know. He, she said, my whole joy was to hold my dear son, Jesus, on my lap. But the divine will made me understand that I, as his mother, should place him in the manger at everyone's disposal. So that whoever wanted could caress him, could kiss him, could take him in their arms. And if he were there, as if he were the, their own child, their own baby, he was the little king of everyone. And therefore they had, we had the right to make of him a sweet pledge of love. So this, this you're gonna see at, at Christmas Eve tonight, you're gonna see uh, the Pope kiss the baby Jesus, the little, the little, the little um, uh, image of, of Jesus. And Jesus said to Louisa, uh, I will, I will accept you kissing, kissing the cross, kissing his wounds, kissing the baby Jesus as if you're actually kissing me. And, and this is the thing that helps us understand how much he loves us. Jesus says, I, Mary said, I have to put everyone, I have to give Jesus to everyone at their disposal. Whoever wants could kiss him, could caress him, could take them in his arms as if they were his own child. And if the little king of all, therefore, uh, he he's given us the right to make of Jesus the sweet pledge of love. And this is what we're doing for Christmas. We're telling him how much we love him. We're thanking him for coming to earth. And we promise him that we will not abandon him. 
And she says, and I, the Blessed Mother, in order to fulfill the supreme volition, deprived myself of my innocent joys, beginning with works and sacrifices, the office of a mother, giving Jesus to everyone. My child, the divine will is demanding. This is, this is, this is what you have to understand. God has given us a duty and a responsibility by giving us the, the diary of Louisa, by giving us the book of heaven. He's asked, he's asked us to um, be open to this duty that he wants us to possess. So Our Lady says, my child, the divine will is demanding. It wants everything, even the sacrifice of the holiest things. And according to the circumstances, even the great sacrifice of depriving oneself of Jesus. You're going to, you're going to understand that as you, as you really begin to read the diary, the great sacrifice of depriving yourself of Jesus. God is going to teach us how to live the, the true life of, of Mary, the true life of Jesus, the new Adam, Jesus, and the new Eve, Mary. And it's the great sacrifice that they went through. Our Lady, you know, a short time after Jesus was born, saw that Herod killed the holy innocents. She knew that they died because he was after Jesus. She knew this. 33 years later, she's at the cross and she knows either her son dies or all of humanity dies. And she, the Blessed Mother, chose, sacrificed her son. She chose, she chose us to live. And she knew if he didn't die on the cross, we were all gonna die eternally. The great sacrifice of depriving oneself of Jesus. However, it does so in order to extend its kingdom in us even more, to multiply the life of Jesus in us even more. Because when the creature deprives himself of Jesus out of love for Jesus, her heroism and sacrifice is so great that she has the virtue of producing new life of Jesus in, in, in humanity. This new life of Jesus, this new and divine way of holiness that John Paul II told us to get ready for is close. And in order to form another home for Jesus in each human heart. Our Lady loves us so much that she's going to, if we say fiat, produce new the new life of Jesus in us. Jesus gazing in our gazing, speaking in our speaking, listening in our listening, walking in our walking, producing a new life of Jesus in us in order to form another home for Jesus. He wants to be the Lord of, of you. He wants to be your king, not just a personal um, in, uh, relationship with Jesus. He wants to be the Lord of your life. He wants, he wants you to be so one with him that you have the happiness of heaven within you. A new home for Jesus is with us on this day. This is why we celebrate Christmas. Jesus is with us. Jesus has planned this and, and the kingdom is coming. Therefore, dear child, our lady says, be attentive. Never deny anything to the divine will. It's always fiat. It's always fiat. When we learn to say fiat as our lady did, when the angel said, you're gonna be the mother of God, she says, how can this be? She says, I'm, I'm made of, I, I have promised a perpetual virginity. So did Joseph. How can I become the mother? What do I need to do to have what the God what God wants happen to me? What do I need to do? And, and the angel said it would be through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
She said, fiat me, let it be done as you say. We're waiting for the second Pentecost. Let it be done to me as you say. How can we begin to live this new and abundant life of Jesus and Mary reigning in us? Let it be done as you say, through the power of the Holy Spirit. We haven't seen anything yet. The second Pentecost is gonna make the first Pentecost look like a drop in the bucket. What's coming is so magnificent. It's so beautiful. And he's asked us to be alive at this time. He's predestined us to be alive at this time, to embrace this gift of gifts, this prodigy of prodigies, this great gift of the divine will. And, and now the last thing is, is it's a prayer that Louisa wrote and prayed. Uh, and this is in volume 10. And the prayer is, Jesus, you are love. She says, in every moment, in every hour, I want to love you, Lord Jesus, with all my heart. In every breath of my life, while breathing, I will love you, Lord Jesus. In every beat of my heart, love, love, I will repeat to you, my Lord and God. In every drop of my blood, love, love, I will cry out to you, Lord Jesus. In every movement of my body, love alone will I embrace. Of love alone, I want to speak. At love alone, I want to look. To love alone, I want to listen. To always love, I want to think. With love alone, I want to burn. With love alone, I want to be consumed. Only love, I want to enjoy. Only love, I want to content. From love alone, I want to live. Within love alone, I want to die. In every instant and in every hour, I want to call everyone to love you, Lord Jesus. Only and always together with Jesus and in Jesus, I shall live. Into his heart, I will plunge myself. Together with Jesus and with his heart, love, love, I will love you, Lord Jesus. And now, for the blessing, we've got, we're gonna do the blessing was what, what the, what the happened with the, um, in the early church when the Eucharist wasn't there, a newly baptized baby would be held as a blessing to um, per, a perfect, innocent, perfect, perfect human baptized. So tonight we're gonna do that with the baby Jesus. May the baby Jesus bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you.